that most extraordinary process is signaled by a tamar wallaby licking her pouch. The birth is only the start of an arduous journey. Before it's even clawed its way free of the membrane, the young responds to gravity, resisting its pull, heading upwards towards the pouch. The licking is not so much to clean a path as to keep the way moist and prevent this tiny creature from drying out. That's all the help it gets from its mother. The baby is only fingertip size, but its forearms and claws are well developed and strong enough to haul it up through the jungle of its mother's fur. Its chest and lungs, too, are already quite large to gulp in vital air on the long climb. Once it reaches the lip of the pouch, it's probably scent that guides the little creature deep inside to one of the four nipples. Its tiny jaws clamp onto the nipple, which then expands inside the mouth, locking the youngster firmly in place. The composition of the milk changes to match the baby's growing needs, becoming steadily richer in fats and proteins. But there's a grimmer option too. If conditions turn bad, the flow of milk stops and the baby dies, saving the mother's resources. Full term in the pouch lasts nearly six months. Then the baby has its second birth into the world outside. These first excursions are quite brief. The pouch will be home for some months yet. Pouches are put to good advantage in Australia's unpredictable environment. They're convenient baby carriers while parents search for better pastures. With a flexible means of reproduction and an efficient means of travel, the kangaroos were set to advance with the spreading grasslands. <laughs> 